Batman, Godzilla. Two beloved characters in the history of the world. But what I don't think you guys understand is that these characters are very much the same character. Now you might be saying, oh, you, this f guy's gone absolutely crazy. How could he say that Batman and Godzilla are the same? Well, here, I've, I got 13 points for you. And we're gonna go through all of them in this video about why Batman and Godzilla are fundamentally the same exact character. Number one, we have Pearl Harbor. I, I don't think I really need to explain to you what Pearl Harbor was. During that time, the United States kind of ended up hating Asian people. It wasn't cool. So during the time of hatred, pretty much any Asian person, regardless if they were Japanese, Chinese, Korean, if you just looked Asian, you were put into uh, internment camps. I think we all know basically what those actually were. And during that time of hatred was when Batman ended up on the big screen for the first time. And um, it wasn't great. During the four hour serial, Batman fought against his greatest enemy, the Japanese. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the main villain of that movie was a Japanese guy. Uh, but not actually a Japanese guy. It was an American playing as a Japanese person doing a very racist Japanese accent. It wasn't good. It was not cool. Now, of course, you may be asking, what the f*** does any of this have to do with anything? Now, because of also Pearl Harbor, the United States not only did they hate Asian people, they hated Asian people so much, and specifically hated the Japanese people so much for this, that they bombed the country twice. And because of that, this random person by the name of uh, Edisho Honda, I I hope to God I said that right. Who was a World War II veteran fighting the good war? I don't know why I said the good war. <laughs> but he was fighting this war for his country and he was a veteran. And then he got to um, see what happened to Hiroshima after America dropped a big bomb onto it. And uh, decided, hmm, I don't really like this that much. So then he came out with the movie Gojira, which has a bunch of nuclear war metaphors. And uh, yeah, so basically my point here is they both came out on the big screen because of this instance right here. Now, if you don't really believe me that much, and I did get a, um, a video sent to me of this YouTube short basically saying that that whole Pearl Harbor history has nothing to actually do with Godzilla. I don't know how true that is. I don't really know if uh, how credible this YouTube channel is. Say, say it is right. Say this whole Pearl Harbor thing is, is, is all wrong. Um, that's okay. I have 12 other points. Speaking of my 12 other points, let's go on to point number two. Um, campy. They have a history of being campy, but also they have a history of being serious. Don't ask me about my spelling. I'm doing this in a rush. Anyways, uh, yeah, so they have a history of being campy and serious. Batman, I mean, even the 43 one was basically campy as shit. Um, Aside from the racism. <laughs> then you get into the Adam West stuff, which was campy. Then you get into the fucking Tim Burton movies, which was kind of campy, but then also, like, kind of dark and serious. Then you go straight back into the campy with the Joel Schumacher shit. Then you get into the fucking Christopher Nolan trilogy, which is all, like, serious and shit. After the third movie, where it's, like, getting a little bit more campy, uh, then we get BDS, which is, like, stupid fucking dark and serious. And dark, I mean, like, edgy. And then, like, that was too dark and serious and edgy and shit. So then we got the Justice League, where Batman's fucking campy again, but then that was too much, so then we go back to the Batman, where it's all dark and serious, and so with Godzilla, um, the first movie, very dark, very serious, I mean, the fucking mom telling her children that we're gonna go see Daddy soon, um, Yeah, so a very dark movie. And then literally the next movie after that was just corny as shit. And they continue being corny as shit throughout the entire Showa era. Um, until you get to, uh, I think about uh, Return of Godzilla. Where they try to go back into a little serious stuff and then it ends up getting campy again. And then we get Shin Gojira, which is just 90% fucking Japanese government and politics. Very serious. And then, um... Minus One was also another serious movie. So, like, you know, they, they both got the history of being campy and serious. Then number three, they both have an anime. Um, the only difference here is, is that the Batman one was actually good. Number four, um, they have... They have an annoying shit for a child. Um, in, uh, in Godzilla's case, as every Godzilla fan knows, it's Minya. And in Batman's case, it's Damien. A lot of people hate Minya. I'm not sure what the actual popular consensus is of Damien Wayne. Personally, 
the little shit annoys the fuck out of me half the time, most of the time. And, um, honestly, I would just say that Minya's a lot more tolerable. That's the difference here. I mean, they're, they're both the same. Again, they're the same. They both have an annoying little shit for a son. That is practically the same. The only difference is Minya's a lot more tolerable. Fucking fight me on that. <laughs> Number five. Uh, they have... What the fuck am I supposed to write here? <laughs> They have characters, uh, or versions of the character that are not fundamentally the character. Now, if we're talking about Batman, it's obviously going to go to Batman vs. Superman. If you are upset by me saying that, um, grow up. But no, seriously, like, Batman fucking killing in that movie, that's just fundamentally not the character. Now, for Godzilla, I think we should all know the fucking T-Rex iguana is not Godzilla. And Roland Emmerich does not understand Godzilla in the same way that Zack Snyder did not understand Batman. Number six, they have different suits. Throughout the, the eras of the Godzilla franchise, there's always different suits. Of course, you know, they're, they're, they're men inside suits. And the design always changes depending on the era, especially even in the Reiwa era, where we're not even having men in suits, it's all CGI, but they even have different designs. Shin Godzilla and Minus One Godzilla, they don't even look the same. So... They have a different design. And then when you look at the Batman movies, the bat suit's always changing. You know, Adam West doesn't look like Michael Keaton, which doesn't look like George Clooney, which doesn't look like Val Kilmer, which doesn't look like Christian Bale, which doesn't look like Robert Pattinson, which doesn't look like uh, Ben Affleck. So, d yeah, different suits. <laughs> Number seven, they have an anti-bullying plot in, in, uh, in, in some cases. Uh, Godzilla's case, it was All Monsters Attack, a.k.a. Godzilla's Revenge, a.k.a. Uh, the movie with the little shit kid, and the movie with, uh, Minya. I don't know much about this movie, I've only seen the ending. I want to say, because I've heard that the movie is about, like, anti-bullying, because I guess the kid gets bullied or something, but, um, that point's a little iffy because of the fact that at the end of the movie, the kid just becomes a bully. In Batman's case, um, I'm gonna quote two episodes from the 2004 TV show, The Batman. Now, people always say Attack of the Terrible Trio is an allegory for bullying. I guess. The bullied becomes the bully. But actually, I want to go to the episode, The Apprentice. In that episode, there's this class clown that, um, kind of picks on Barbara. She's kind, he's kind of a bully to her. He gets detention, and then that leads him to becoming the apprentice of the Joker, where he's a little bit more of a bully, before he eventually realizes that the Joker doesn't want to do just simple, innocent jokes. He wants to kill people, because it's the Joker. And then uh, he just quits doing that. So uh, that's, that's, the, that's the most comparison I could do for that point. <laughs> Number eight. Um, they fight apes. They both fight big apes. For Godzilla, we all know, is he fights King Kong. For Batman, he fights Gorilla Grodd. Also, in that episode of Attack of the Terrible Trio, which I watched before recording this to see why the internet was saying it was an allegory for bullying, um, there's a fucking King Kong joke in there. Like, I'm not kidding. A character becomes a gorilla, and then another character says, I've seen this movie before after the character that's a gorilla is holding Barbara. It's a King Kong joke. In a Batman episode? I hate the fact that this this was originally a joke, but I keep getting it proven more and more. Anyways, um, what, do you, what did I say? Joke? This isn't a joke. This is 100% serious. Um, number nine. They have people that worked on animated versions of the character. Now, I'm going to break the um, reality of things. I'm going to go on my phone because I can't fucking remember any of this shit. Sung Un Kim? I don't know if I pronounced that. I'm sorry if I butchered it. Uh, he was the storyboard artist for 20 episodes of Godzilla the series. You know, that animated series that I think is about the, the version that's not the character. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so he did uh, 20 episodes of that series, um, and also was an animator for the main title of it, so that's kind of cool. Uh, he also did work on The Batman 2004, as well as its uh, side-along movie, The Batman vs. the Dracula. And then Brandon Yeti, which, again, I hope I pronounced that right. I probably didn't. Sorry if I butchered it. Uh, he was a storyboard artist for two episodes of Godzilla the series, and he also worked on a shit ton of fucking Batman stuff. He worked on the new Batman Adventures, he worked on the Batman 2004, he worked on Brave and the Bold, he worked on a campy version of the character. He was also on Under the Red Hood, and uh, he also worked on Death in the Family. But yeah, anyways, like, you got you, weird coincidence. Coincidence? I don't think this is a coincidence. Anyways, number 10. Um... <laughs> 
shit, I actually am wrong. I'm I'm so I'm off. I'm off with my timing. Okay, let's let we can do this again. Number 10, we have um this this simple movie called Batman Meets Godzilla. Now, I don't know too much about this movie. I don't even know if it's real, to be honest. I tried fact-checking it. I tried seeing, is this real? It's on a Wikipedia page about Godzilla that isn't a fan wiki, so I'm assuming maybe it's real. I guess there's apparently this movie that was going to be made where Batman met Godzilla. I, they maybe fought. I don't know. If this is a real movie, what the fuck? I had this whole video plan. I had this, I've been making this point for a while now. And, and... I, I, I came up with this list that got brought up. Why, why would that, why does that movie exist in the history? Like, if that's a real thing, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, number 11, uh, we have Catwoman and uh, Mothra. Now, I'm only really bringing this one up. It's a little bit of a stretch. Um, the only reason why this is here on the list is shipping. That's it. <laughs> I was also told by a um, fellow massive Godzilla fan, the one that got me into Godzilla, to to mention something about a uh, a sexy Mothra. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> the schizophrenic ramblings of a madman. <laughs> <laughs> Number 12, they have games from the 80s. You know what came out in 1983? Godzilla from the Commodore 64. You know what came out three years later in 1986? Batman for the Amstrad CPC. <laughs> Coincidence? I think not. And last but not least, number 13, the best portrayal of both characters are dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> 